I've done a lot of installs with Ubiquiti over the years, and they've all gone really well. I've done follow-ups on those installs, about 300 plus access points installed at a company, times when we've done entire school districts, not just one building, but the entire district in Unify. And I've done videos on the recent door access and NVR system, and just how impressive that platform has become. But the question that comes up a lot is, what about their firewalls? Well, it's not that there's been any egregious security problems with them. They've just fallen short when it comes to features and features are where it matters and compliance also matters too. So I'll be touching on that in this video and version nine that Ubiquiti just released a couple days ago changes all that. They actually have completed and of course there was already features coming in version seven and version eight, but I think version nine is really where Ubiquiti starting to shine with their firewalls and I'm starting to change my mind about them. So let's get started. Now I'm going to start here with this blog post that you'll also find a link down below. And the first thing on the list is zone based firewall rules. Big change from the way they laid them out before. This makes a lot more sense. It's much more human readable. And one of the really important things when you're setting up firewalls is making sure that you haven't made any mistakes by putting these in a very human readable format. I believe this will make it a lot easier to for people to understand the rules they've set up, make sure that they're secure and understand the policies that go between any different section of the network they created. Now let's talk about cybersecure by Proofpoint, a rather controversial topic, I guess, based on some of these social media posts I've seen. Unify Cybersecure, powered by Proofpoint, takes your gateways IDS IPS to the next level with an extensive, continuously updated library of threat signatures. This is where people seem to think Unify has broken their promise. Now, many firewalls use free threat intelligence feeds that are out there, or maybe the backend company supporting the firewall buys a feed, but those have a cost associated with them. Matter of fact, the costs are sometimes tiered. Here's your really basic feed that will let you put on all your firewalls, but there's a license fee for each firewall you sell where you want the more advanced feeds. This is usually baked into the subscription fees of many firewalls, but because Unify doesn't have a subscription fee for those people that would like the enhancements that come with a threat intelligence feed from someone like Proofpoint, well, you have to pay for it. Ubiquity could pay for it. And obviously by selling hardware, some of the money they divert from hardware goes to developing the firewall. But of course, if a lot of people buy their firewalls, that's wonderful for success, but it's also challenging as a business model is go, well, how do we provide them this expensive proof point feed and proof point for every system we sell is going to charge a license for it. So I don't see this as a Ubiquity breaking the promise of offering a subscription free experience because it doesn't break the functionality of the firewall. It's an add on enhancement. They're clear about who it's coming from. It's not called Ubiquity's intelligence feed because they're not in a threat intelligence business. Proofpoint is, they're well known in the market. So I think this is a welcome feature for people that would like it, but because it's optional, back to I don't see the breaking of the Ubiquity promise, but feel free to have whatever hot take you want on that topic. And a final big new feature is the site magic SD-WAN now scaled to a thousand sites. I think this is really cool. And anyone who's watched my video on doing a site to site VPN with many networks has known there's a lot of steps involved in doing it manually. But if you want to see how it's done magically site to site works well for that. I think this is kind of a cool feature. You throw them in the dashboard, Unify will coordinate getting those sites set up for you with a few clicks. They've had this in different variations over the years. It's always had some limitations in scaling, being scaled all the way up to a thousand sites makes this, well, a much more attractive option for larger companies that want to have large deployments to unify and not have to manage all those individual networks for setting them up or when things change. Now, I did update my self-hosted controller from version eight to version nine, went off without a hitch, no problems. Always do a backup, always make sure you have a plan to restore, but no problems when I did this. I don't have any firewalls at all attached to my self-hosted controller. So I'm gonna move over to the EFG so you can see what these zone-based firewall rules look like. And putting it really simply, clicking on it and being able to see what policies allow or don't allow is really a game changer in terms of simplicity. I like this. It's something that you can upgrade. If you went from version eight to version nine, you would have been presented with an option to click upgrade because I've been testing this since it was in alpha all the way till now. I did that right away. 
I haven't had any problems with it, but I'll be doing a separate deeper dive video. I know a lot of people have asked for an updated video on unified firewall rules, but knowing this was coming for the last several months, I've just had to say I'll do it soon. And I was waiting until these are released and in general availability for everyone before I do that video. So that video will be coming out soon. Now, something I want to mention here is if you decide to upgrade to the Cybersecure Enterprise by Proofpoint, and you can click here to activate it, and it gives you the price on a per device basis. This can also be done through the Unify Site Manager. But for those wondering, and this was a question that came up at the Ubiquity event, if you're running the shadow mode or an HA high availability setup with Unify, it does not charge you twice for this. It'll only charge you for the one set of firewalls in that particular situation. So it is only per firewall, per site essentially, but not per firewall if you have two of them in an HA pair. Now, the last piece I want to mention is under control pane, integrations, and API. They have a new API manager here. And I think the more documentation they create, the more people are going to create some really interesting integrations. Uh, this is welcome and proves that Ubiquity really wants to integrate with other ecosystems because it's more than just the firewall and control plane of the devices. Sometimes there's third-party things that you may want to do or different integrations, and this is going to open up those opportunities. Now, I do have a question for you, the audience. What do you think of Unify version 9? What do you think of the Unify firewalls? Have they finally gotten there? Have they become a really good contender with their high availability, these new enhanced firewall rules that make their firewall, well, usable, in my opinion, in terms of rule setup. But leave those thoughts and comments down below, especially if you want to hear your opinion on the Proofpoint subscriptions. That has been a hot button topic, apparently, and maybe I'm missing something, but I'm always replying to people engaging with the comments, so leave them down below. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion on things, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com, like and subscribe to see more content from the channel, and head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials you find me on there. All right, and thanks.